Now, thanks for staying with us. Now, substance abuse has a major impact on individuals, families, and communities. The effect of substance abuse are cumulative, significantly contributing to costly so social, physical, mental, and public health problems. Now, in Nigeria, the prevalence of any drug abuse was estimated at 14.4%, or 14.3 million people aged between 15 and 64 in 2018. The extent of drug use in Nigeria is comparatively high when compared with 2016 global annual prevalence of any drug use of 5.6% among adult population. The most common among age bracket of drug users are between the ages of 25 and 39. We're wondering why this is so. Now remember, you can join this conversation Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Wish you Africa One with the hashtag Waze, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8038 <sighs> There's a lot of things going on. I was watching um, um, a foreign channel and reports about you know this lockdown and how a lot of teenagers, a lot of teenagers, you know they've. Decided to indulge. Indulge, and not only that, some of them are even getting pregnant. You understand? So, exactly. And you know, when the prevalence of rape, remember that time when the rape cases spiked? Yes. And it was going up. You know, I was having this conversation with my husband, and he was saying that, Have you noticed that when you go on the roads, you see those paraga, mm -hmm. you know, those um, sachet drinks that you have, exactly. you know, the, sachet, the strong the, alcohol, that is being bus hot. drivers. Um, conductors, that you see all those guys that collect money from the bus, all the touts, the agrarians mm -hmm. and all of that. They are constantly with sachets of these things. So because, why I'm breaking it down, I want to start from here. Is that when we hear drug, we are thinking, okay, maybe it is cocaine, marijuana, loud, and which other one, you know, all those, mm -hmm. those are that stronger drugs. As little as the abuse of alcohol has caused a ripple effect in our society exactly. you know so how I mean, how did we get here to the point where it seems like people cannot even function any longer except they put some kind of substance in their system i will take it from the aspect of mental health usually a lot of people are pressurized because they have a lot of challenges they're going through and they they try to seek avenues to let go of the pain mm -hmm. and in the process of trying to let go of that pain what do they do they take the drugs or, or they look for something that they can use to suppress it. It can be marijuana, it can be loud, it can be anything, just to make them feel happy because they want to get to that, you know, false heaven. And look at the state of the country today. A lot of things have actually gone from bad to worse. Nobody is looking out for the poor man. Nobody's looking out for the average Nigerian. So the only thing that they think that they can actually hold on to is to take um, some form of um, outlet of, is, um, <coughs> what's it called? Is alcohol. Substance. Yeah. Yes. What okay. do you think, Lam? My, my take on this is that when you were giving us the statistics, mm. Mm. you talked about between the age of 25 and 39, and what I made up from that is that um, these are young adults, people that are just going into adulthood. Yeah. Mm. Quite a number of us were raised not in the reality of things. Mm. Most of us were raised, you know, sheltered. Absolutely. And all of a sudden, you're being trusted into the world without any guardians and all that. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of pressure being an adult. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember when we were growing up, I can't wait to be an adult. <laughs> when you now become an adult, you want to run you away from this issue of house rent, this and that. And you now realize that, you know, when we were growing up, when your parents do not do things that you require at that time, you feel that when I grow up, I'll get I'll it get better. better. You actually think that life is, you know, is a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. And you just, you're just being into the world and you now see the realities of life. So it depends on your tenacity, how well you can cope. So Which is also tying back people, to what is he saying I about the agree. mental yeah. resilience that oh. yeah. we have. Because now, when mm -hmm. I saw the statistics that they said, if four people are on drugs, I mean, sorry, one in four people, you know, the statistics say one in four is a woman so that tells me the numbers are higher amongst women mm. 
Mm. Why, why would that be, you know? Because the is it that the pressure on, on the woman is a lot more than it's on the man? Back, but in, did the they ever days, your back in the days, were women were told, okay, you can, you can get married and have children. That was the mental goal that they gave the, to, to the woman. But in today's world, that is not the case. The woman it's not could, happening. could be the breadwinner. The could be the, yeah. Everything depends on the woman at the end of the but day. Bottom line. Did you ever cross your mind when you were growing up? Or has it ever crossed your mind mm -hmm. even now? To ever use drugs? Totally so, not. So that now, comes back to peer pressure. Let me, okay? let me explain let me, because I am sure okay. my children will be watching. It's yes. important that we are as honest as, as possible. possible so that exactly. they understand some of these things. Yes. So when I was growing up, I remember that we would take, because we saw people smoking. Mm -hmm. So we'll take pieces of papers. I don't know if you ever did that. We'll roll them up. But and we try to, to match we it. light it. Of course. We yeah, actually light it because yeah. we wanted to understand, understand what it meant or what it felt like smoking. So we'll, we'll do that, you know, drag it once or twice, but it never stuck. You didn't try the real thing. It, no, 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 I never <laughs> did. I never did because I, was, I, 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 I knew from a very young age that those things were harmful to my system, mm -hmm. right? But you see, when it comes to alcohol, maybe because my mom, her business, she had a massive, um, what's it called, food business in Kaduna. It was okay. one of the biggest restaurants in Kaduna that we had senators, different people, all coming walks in. of life coming to. So I saw what alcohol did to people. To How you see a big man that is all put together when he's living is no longer coordinated. Too much of everything Do you understand? So for me, I just said, mm -mm -mm -mm, mm -hmm. this is not me. I can't, I can't live this kind of life where you are, you are not coordinated. So, mm -hmm. you know. So maybe that one didn't stick. But we tried some of these things, but it never just stuck. stuck. But I had someone that is very close to me. And I was really, really pained because this is someone that is brilliant, extremely brilliant, you know. But his life at this point is almost like, you know, that because is. he went to, he went very far, you know, cough syrups, so many things, you know, mm. and it's quite prevalent. So I'm wondering what exactly is the 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 reason behind i i hear you when you talk about mental, mental health state. you know because truly you must be stable mentally for you to be well, able to ooh, understand why the number know. of brilliant people are on drugs he, okay now that's where i'm, I'm now number that's where i'm now even coming so while i was in university i remember i had colleagues in fact one of my lecturers right now he's a top lecturer in china he, in fact that's how intelligent he was and the story they sold to us was that for you to be able to be to retain what you stimulant. read, it's yes, it's, yes, you take cannabis to be able to retain. So there are so many stories, you know, that is tied to, to drug it. use and abuse and substance use. Mm -hmm. They tell you, oh, it maintains, it. It, it gives you a, a, a certain high, you know. But we've seen that these things have done a lot more harm than good. good. So I'm just wondering why, why we still have this prevalence, you know, and why in particular would we have more women, you know, on drugs? Is it that the pressure is more on them or, you know, that's, uh, uh, I yes, mean, I'm I just wondering. A, I don't have an answer. You know, honestly, I'm I trying to wrap my head around you know, it. I, I don't will know. state that women are more into it because of the pressures that have been given to the women in today's world and in today's society. Women are fighting for their rights. Women are fighting feminism. Women are fighting in laws. Women are fighting their patriarchy. husbands, trying patriarchy. They're trying to, you know, make their voices heard in diverse ways. And it's not just a, a day's um, um, a work for them and at the same time they have to come back home and deal with the children deal with schooling for the children ha make sure that everything is okay at home so the pressure on today's woman the 21st century woman is it's massive you it's know my hard. friend i had a friend of mine not to talk um, of the challenges they face at the office so when you're talking about i had a friend of mine that i remember she told me you know she broke down we held each other's hand and she told me that see there was a time if she had not taken the big bottle of you know the Kodi. the hot drink not even the, which what you could not the no don't mention brand <laughs> but the 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 the, the spirits the liquor yes. if she hadn't taken that she wasn't able to sleep you know, it was constant every night she had to take it so it was permanently by her bedside so now is a miracle that she's out of that you know but let me bring in our guests um so we'd we'll hear what she has to say chinonso akono is the coordinating manager of freedom foundation nigeria a non-profit organization committed to social reformation by empowering individuals who are plagued with categories of social and economic challenges in order to achieve individual and community transformation. Um, I don't know if she's there. Thanks for joining us, Chinonso. Hello, Salem. 
Hello. <laughs> How are you, Chinonso? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm Good so to finally connect. Yeah, and um, I must say, great work you are doing. You and the entire team, the um, the founder, Pastor Tony Rapu. I know he's the founder of um, Freedom Foundation. Great work you're doing because, I mean, we saw so many videos that, you know, you, you are just mind blown. When you see the person, how the person was on the street, and now bringing now um, years later what the person is looking like because somebody held that person yeah. by their hands, you know, to help them through the process of, you know, rising ab uh, above um, substance abuse. But, you know, so walk us through, you know, in what you're doing as um, the person in charge of the, the foundation for rehabilitating people, especially in the area of substance abuse. What has been the biggest challenge, you know, and what is the main cause of why do people even go into drugs in the first place? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Salem. And thank you for um, applauding the work that we're doing um, that, that has been pioneered by our founder, Dr. Tony Rapu. Um, the issue of drug abuse is a very complex. It's very complex. And so sometimes if you want to go to a root cause to say this is the particular cause of you know, substance abuse or sub sub substance misuse by people, it might be very difficult. But one of the things that we found in our journey of rehabilitating people is people resort to substance as substance misuse, as a coping mechanism. Mm. And so in a bit to avoid stress, in a bit to avoid um, anxiety, when they go through pain that they are unable to feel, you find, you find that they begin to um, just rely on substances to get a certain feeling of high or also we find that people take substances to fit in so there's a lot of peer pressure there's the wanting to belong to be seen to be cool and then you you try the substance one time you take it another time it probably in a brownie or something and then you find yourself going all the way to mixing all sorts of substances and you become a poly drug user mm. so we, if we if we also we've also found in our work of rehabilitation that substance abuse or misuse can as well, as well be hereditary hmm. you know it can be something that's been in the family and you know it comes up in another generation so it's the cause of substance misuse as it is currently is a complex it's so complex that's what we found in our journey of rehabilitation so um Thanks for joining us, um, Chinayan. The key thing here now is this. Um, usually they say that um, rehabilitation is supposed to be by the government or by the individual. Who should we hold responsible for um, rehabilitation of individuals who abuse substance? Because of the nature of um, substance misuse, hmm. we all need to partner together to help people access treatment. And so we can't leave the government alone to provide rehabilitation services in our country. We can also say we're going to leave the ind individual because I mean, an individual require professional help to be able to overcome the issues that they have with substance misuse. And so it's a, it's a partnership that's required to be able to provide access to treatment for people who have substance misuse disorder. So we find that there are private organizations that are helping out with providing access to treatments. There's the non-profit, um, non-governmental organizations as well, which we belong to. We try at, as much as possible to provide, to provide access to treatment. And then also working with government bodies. We also do a lot of work with the UNODC. We do a lot of, it, we do a lot of work with the UN, of course, to be able to provide access to treatment. So it's, an, it's a partnership and there, and a collaboration to be able to provide the solution that substance misuse um, requires in our time. Okay, um, and so my own um, worry, or oh, I, I really need a bit of explanation in this area, and it's going to be from the legal aspect. In the US, I'm aware that there's a bit of um, <clears throat> adequate legislation when it comes to substance misuse, mis uh, prescription drugs, and all that. But however, regardless of the, of, of the prohibition, the legal aspect of it, the numbers are rising. It's not abating. Now, in Nigeria, we really do not have, we have the laws, but enforcement is still a problem in Nigeria. The, the numbers are also increasing. 
So what do you think is the problem? Is it, how do you think we should balance the legal aspect of it? Well, I, I would say it's, so the, end, yeah, the NDLEA is supposed to be working to ensure that the access to um, drug, drug, um, to drug is limited. There's also, of course, NAVDAC, right? And we, the, we hope that they're all working together to ensure that access to these substances are limited. When it comes to legislation, when it comes to legislation, it's a, it's a different topic entirely. It can take us the whole day talking about, you know, what, what the government should be doing, what the government shouldn't be doing. But what I think that we should focus on, or what I think that we, we focus on as an organization is we try as much as possible to push advocacy for prevention so that as much as, yes, we know that the government has a role to play in either the legalization of, of illicit um, or, of, of substances or either trying as much as possible to enforce the laws that are already in operation. We also, as individuals, as organizations, even as a family member, we all have a role to play in advocating towards prevention. So we encourage the young people, we tell them of the high risk involved in taking substances. We also tell them that it's detrimental to their health, detrimental to them achieving their potential. I mean, we've had, there's one of the, one of the, one case we had a young man who he wanted to, like in the, you know, the normal Nigerian language, he wanted to blow, you know, he wanted to have a house, you know, a good car and all of that. But then he got into the pressure, the peer pressure of taking substance to feel the high that, you know, comes with taking cocaine, cannabis. And all of a sudden, 10 years down the line, he found himself in a, in a hole and he wasn't even able to achieve the dreams that he had so some eventually he came to our center and he went through the process of rehabilitation for three three to six months and he's in a pretty stable place currently but he's lost some years so right now he's advocating for prevention so it's something we all need to do at every sphere both in the family and school in our community even churches religious organizations need to start talking about prevention we all have to start it's something that we can avoid so yes we know that the government has their role to play but we also as individuals we have our own roles to play okay so um non so i wanted to to ask but you just mentioned um mentioned it briefly like how long it takes you know for the rehabilitation process that's one then you know there's this misconception that they sell to people that no, I mean, there are some drugs that it doesn't. I have seen cases of it is the first trial. They just dragged it Stop. small and it didn't enter their brain and that was it. They lost it. Mm -hmm. You understand? And, you know, I have also seen cases that it was prolonged usage of the drugs that eventually now got to that point where. I mean, it has it is now uh, um, an addiction, and they are not able to to stop it. And you know, it's almost like a nut case. So I wanted to ask how long it takes, you know, to rehabilitate, you know, someone that is going through that process of um, becoming clean. Then also, how expensive it is is it rather, you know, taking care of one person to to get them through that process. Because I know at some point you would have to even isolate the person, take the person to a home and all of that. So how expensive is it? Okay, um, first to answer the question about how long it takes, it's, based, it's on a case by case basis. So what works for individual A or how long it would take individual A to go through the process of rehabilitation up to the point of coming clean, might, might be six months or three months and then how long it takes the other, maybe individual B, to go through the process of detoxif detoxification and also, you know, therapy and, you know, learning coping skills. It, it can take maybe three months or more. So what we found is that generally, I can say between three to, between six to nine months sometimes. Mm. But other times you find that it takes some people longer. It can even take... Depend and also depending on how long you use this a substance for. Yeah. So if you've used it for like maybe 10 years or more, so you find that longer. your ability to get clean becomes, yeah, it takes you a longer period to heal. Okay. And it, it takes you a longer period to, to recuperate back to oh, what okay. you sorry, oh. I lost you there. No, all right. You know what, um, Nonso, we'll still have you. We'll go on a short break and we'll be right back. Please stay with us. <laughs> 